Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason K uh, playing uh, Yandere uh, Simulator, a game made by Yandere Dev. And right now, I'm going to do something a bit more different than before, which means that, uh, well, before that, I'm gonna. Like uh, today is that uh, I'm going to pick it up some tapes here. The actually tapes, we can even know that we don't see very well. It looks like, it looks like more rectangular, but it's a tape. So yeah, there's only two of them inside that basement here. So there's nothing, wrong, nothing else that I can interact with or pick it up with. So I'm just going to school right away. So yeah, there's some tapes that are scattered around the school need in which uh, I need to find them all. But before that, I want to see if there's any like uh, objects that I can find uh, near the school entrance other, other than those five weapons here. Uh, okay, so yeah, I guess I'm going to start right there. Uh, not really going to interact with this student here because uh, it's not my purpose today. Today I, I need to find the tape around school. So let's do that. And I'll let the, the student take care of themselves. I'm not going to bother with them today. I'm not going to murder them either. I'm just looking for the tapes. So, yeah, the last time uh, I said that uh, the trick uh, to find like uh, the tips that uh, usually like uh, if you look at the ground, if there's some small like pixel that are shown like uh, that are different like comparing to the green like grass surface, well it's a tape. Sometimes there's magazine too, but uh, most of the time there's tapes that are scattered around the, the area here. I just have to take a look of the dark pixel and I will be able to figure out that there there's a tape or a magazine right there. There's a magazine right there, actually. Okay, so, so far it's not so bad. I still need to look around carefully. But it's not so bad. Okay, so there's nothing there. I think there's... Let's go inside to see if there's anything interesting right there. Oh, it looks like a garden. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so let's see. There's no magazine or tapes around there. Alright. Nothing there. About if I go inside shed, what is a shed? Oh, okay, the place is called a shed. All right, cool. Was kind of wondering why there's a name there. Usually, I, I, I didn't see anything like that before. All right, there's nothing there. So yeah, I'm going to take our look around the area here so right now I'm going to go to that direction here oh there's some dark pixel right there I think it's a tape oh it is cool. alright let's pick it up okay so there's some object right there oh it's a magazine I think I think it's a magazine alright let's pick it up the magazine come on 
Okay, so I'll take a look around here to see if there. Oh, there's a dark pixel right there. I can see something. I can see something here. Oh, it's a thing. All right, cool. All right, so far I'm doing good. So there's nothing around there. Let's go to the library right here. There might be something interesting that I can grab on. You know, there might be some interesting items, actually. But I have to figure out my, I have to figure my way out too. Uh, I'm not really a fan of labyrinths here. Sometimes I get lost, and I don't like that. If that happens to me. Yeah, maybe I should go inside. Okay, so let's go inside. Alright. Oh, I'm trapped in a corner here. Oh, there's a magazine right there. Alright, cool. Okay, so let's go back. Alright, uh, I went there already, so time to go right there, I think. Yay, another magazine. Alright, what now? So, I need to get out of this place here. Ugh, I already went there, man. What the hell? Where should I go, really? Yo, I'm stuck. Yo, I don't like it, man. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm freaking stuck here. Yeah, I'm really stuck. Maybe I should go a little bit to the back here. Oh yeah, it's right there. Alright, cool. Oh, it's not! Oh shit, I'm lost, really? I hate that labyrinth, man. I mean, I know it's small, but even that, it's confusing to me. Jeez, it's not there. Magazine right there. Alright, cool. Let's pick it up. Okay. There is a, must be another magazine right there. Yep. Okay, so I think I got everything here. I think. So now I need to get out of here. Oh, there's a magazine right there. Alright, I managed to like, pick it up like five magazines already. I don't think there's any more of that. Actually. Yo, there's some glitch here, man. I hate that. Okay, well, I guess I have to get out of here, man. I already went like through of this, man. I'm not really to stay here any longer. So let's go back. Can I go back? I really hate to stay to being stuck here, man. Oh my god, I hate this fucking labyrinth here. No, I'm still getting stuck. Fucking shit. I'm still getting stuck here. It's not here. I have to go there. Okay, that's the exit. Alright, cool. Finally. Took me a while, man. Okay, I went there already, so now I'm going to go to that direction here. Or oh, maybe I forgot the, to go inside the, this place here. Oh, 
was the soda. Alright, cool. Uh, there might be some stuff around there. I'm just going to look around just to make sure that uh, I might find something interesting. Oh, this is mostly for, you know, swimming suit here or gym suit. Hey, I cannot see anything. Alright, there's nothing. You can interact in those lockers. No. Oh, here's a sauna. Along with the bathtub. Uh, nothing interesting. I'll just go back here. Alright. So, let's see. I'll go there. I'll just go, go to the corners first. To the sides first. Before like getting inside the, the tracks. Man, I have to do things very quick, man. Because it's already like uh, 8 a.m. in the morning. Yep, it's 8 a.m. I have only 30 minutes before like class starts. Oh, I can see a pixel right there. There must be something interesting that I can pick it on. Alright, cool. I'll pick up this tape here. Is there any other stuff? Oh, there's a magazine right there. Alright, cool. Uh, let's see. Yeah, once I'm done with the, the corners and the sides of the backyard, uh, well, then I'll just go inside the tracks, the racing tracks. This is a good way for me to figure out like which way that, that I already went through. I can see a dark pixel right there. Right there. Oh, there's two items I can, I can see right now. In the grass. Okay. This one must be a magazine. Alright, I don't have much time right now because, you know, I'm still grabbing tapes and grabbing tapes that are scattered around school here. Okay, there's nothing there and I already went through up this before. So let's go to the tracks, racing tracks, inside the racing tracks. So where are they? I can see a pixel right there. Up. Oh, this is a uh, this is gymnastic room or well, gymnastic. There's no door. Uh, it looks like I can go through up this. But yeah, it, it really seems that I can go through up this. Yeah, I think I'm going to start running off time. Well, not for the videos, but uh, you know, because I'm have to go back to class very soon. Yay! I can go through up this gym here. Yeah, let's go back to uh, the class here, and then uh, once uh, once the class is over, well, when uh, it's lunch time, I'm just going to browse around. Again, but I think I don't really have to browse around in the backyard because I already went through of everything here. There, I mean. So I'll just go back to class and I'll try to check it out on the roof in the rooftop and uh, at the the fountain near the school entrance. Right. Oh, everyone's there along with the teacher. Alright, cool. Let's go to class. 
Okay, starting point stands because I was wearing the well, the girl was wearing the old fashioned old uh, fashioned fudoshi underwear. And yeah, we'll try physical education. Well, I mean spending the starting points on that. Okay, now I'm gonna continue like uh, looking for more tapes. Uh, yeah, like I said, I will just go down uh, at the fountain place. There must be some stuff that are scattered there too. Oh yeah, this is what I thought. There's some tapes right there. Oh, there's another tape at the corner. Alright, there's another tape in that corner as well. Let me guess, there's another tape at the, uh, the other corner as well. Oh wow. There's actually four of them at the corner. But otherwise, uh, just take a look around carefully. There's nothing else that I can pick it up. That I, pick, I can pick it on. So I'll, I'll go to the rooftop right now. I'll still have to do this very quick because it's already like 1 in the afternoon. And class starts at 1.30 uh, p.m. Okay, so I'll go like uh, anti-clockwise, which means I start like uh, to the right and then I go to the left until like I do like a full a whole like uh, loop. If you call that a loop. Oh, here are those uh, my rival along with her friend here. Uh, I don't have to, you know, like pay attention to what they are going to say because I already went through of this before. So let's see. Why there's nothing there, man? Oh, there it is. It's a magazine. There's nothing I can say about her. Alright, cool. Alright. Oh, her mic isn't right there. Alright, cool. Oh, her mic isn't right there. There's only magazine, there's no tape. I think I managed to pick them all, man. I mean, that's all the three big places I can go right now. Well, other than the, you know the two uh, girls, like the rival and her friend, I just go there. Oh, they are leaving, so I can pick up some stuff uh, inside the place here. Yeah, there's a magazine right there. All right, cool. Okay, so I'll just have to go back here to the classroom because, you know, there's only 10 in-game minutes left. So there's, there's no way that I'm going to browse around to see, like, uh, if there's any tapes around. So I'm going down. There you go. That was, uh, er I came earlier. Okay, confirm. Physical rank up, you straight into that level 2. I don't know if it means anything. I mean, in terms of gameplay, if how, how much is going to be affected. But, uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, if I remember well, there's like a computer lab in the third floor. Yeah, there's those Sakimiyu right there, I don't know where she, she's going right now. I think there's something right there. It is? Oh, I can interact with this thing. It's a tape. Oh, I got all the tapes. Mysterious tape and basement tape. There's only two of two different types of tapes. 
basement tape obviously was the tape that I found in the basement there's only two of them and the mystery tapes was around scattered around the school which I found all of them so yeah let's play them all because we have this uh, tape recorder well tape player as well so here we go looks like it still works as long as it's recording, I suppose I might as well say something. How long has it been since I last used this thing? It's been at least two decades. Almost three. Those were better times. I was so young back then. My future seemed so bright. I remember following my dreams. I remember a promising career. I remember being happy. If I could turn back time, what would I do differently? I know. I know exactly what I should have done. I shouldn't have gotten involved with that case. With that girl. Pursuing her was the right thing to do. But if I hadn't involved myself with her, I'd still have a career. When did it begin? I think it was April of 1989. The peak of my career as an investigative journalist. That's when I heard about a murder at the local high school. The police had no leads. I decided to investigate it myself. I tried to be a hero. And that was the worst mistake of my life. Okay, so the murder thing that happens in this school, uh, he has a history as well. But if there's so many murders that happen in this school, why they don't close the whole school? I mean, I don't think people would like to go to school where there's so many murders like that, you know? Oh well, I'll go to mystery tapes too. Mysterious tape. The school's faculty didn't let me conduct an investigation on school grounds. They were highly concerned with maintaining their prestigious reputation. They didn't want any police or journalists snooping around and ruining the school's image any more than the murder already had. Or maybe they just had something to hide and didn't want the authorities to find out. To this day, I still don't know how the school managed to convince the police that any crime that takes place on school grounds can only be investigated for six hours maximum. I heard a rumor that the school's headmaster bribes the police department to expedite their investigations as much as possible. There are a lot of unsavory rumors about the school's headmaster, but none have been proven to be true. Because I couldn't work around the school, I used to gather information by interviewing students outside of the school gate when they entered or left the school. It was at this point in time that I noticed a peculiar girl who was quite obviously stalking one of her seniors. I decided to keep my eye on her, and before long, I began to observe some disturbing behavior from her. Oh wow, disturbing behavior? I was wondering what kind of behavior it is. Now tell me it's the same kind of behavior that uh, Yandere Chan has. Alright, Mr. Tape 2, 3. From the school gate, I witnessed the girl do more than just stalk an upperclassman. She stalked any girl who spoke to him. Through student interviews, I kept tabs on what happened to those girls. They became the victims of bullying, were expelled, and in some cases, stopped coming to school. I frequently saw the girl running with a mop and a bucket, as though she always had some sort of mess to clean up. That girl was using manipulation, intimidation, and sometimes even violence to sabotage the boy's love life. If she wasn't above that kind of behavior, the possibility of murder didn't seem too far off. I didn't want to believe that a schoolgirl would actually commit murder just to keep a boy single, but the evidence was staring me straight in the face. That's when I learned a crucial piece of information. The girl who was murdered at the beginning of the school year had a crush on the same boy that was being stalked. The final piece of the puzzle had fallen into place. I knew that I had found the culprit. I went to the police with my findings. It took a lot of talking, but I was eventually able to convince them to take the girl into custody. 
So did it happen? I mean, uh, I don't think it's Yandere Chan. I know, I know that Yandere Chan is doing pretty much the same thing that's described it, but if that was like three, three years ago, man. So I don't think it's the same girl anymore. But uh, yeah, the other girl, girl that uh, he was talking about, does pretty, does pretty much the same thing. So I was wondering what will happen next. Mysterious tape four. The idea of a murderous schoolgirl was scandalous enough to attract lots of attention. Word of her arrest quickly spread across the entire nation. The trial turned into a media circus. I became a celebrity practically overnight. I didn't want to be a public figure, but I did want my investigative skill to be recognized. I hoped that all the attention would boost my career. As it turns out, I was dead wrong. That manipulative little schoolgirl put on the best act I've ever seen. She cried nonstop, feigned ignorance at every opportunity, and had an excuse for every accusation leveled at her. The court fell in love with her. The media fell in love with her. The entire damn nation fell in love with her. She called me a dirty pervert who enjoyed leering at schoolgirls. She called me a fame-seeking yellow journalist. She claimed that I only accused her of murder for sensational headlines. The court bought every word of it. The day the judge declared her innocent, the entire country celebrated like it was a damn holiday. Oh, poor guy, man. All his work were for nothing, man. So the girl was... the suspecting girl was a kid from the, the, the court. From that day forward, I was a national disgrace. I was known across the country as a lecherous journalist who stalked schoolgirls and tried to throw a girl in prison to boost his own career. I saw disgust in the eyes of every person who looked at me. My house and my car were vandalized every day for weeks. Needless to say, I was never able to work as a journalist again. The police department that arrested the girl was also the subject of national criticism. They were accused of being incompetent fools who would arrest anyone without sufficient evidence. Ever since then, the police in that town have been extremely lenient in an attempt to repair their reputation, and don't want to go anywhere near the local high school except for extremely brief periods of time. But the worst part of the entire experience didn't come from the media or the public. Immediately after the trial, I tried to escape the press by hiding in an alley behind the courthouse. Only one person found me there. It wasn't a journalist or a reporter. It was the girl that had just been declared innocent. I'll never forget her face that day. She was smiling, but her eyes were blank. Empty. Soulless. Like a doll's eyes. She looked like she didn't have a single ounce of humanity in her entire body. With that smiling face, she said to me, it would be very easy to make your death look like a suicide. Don't ever cross me again. She turned around and left without another word. Oh my god, man. That girl really manipulated the journalist, man. That poor journalist. At the same time, the cough. Because the cough's uh, want to regain your reputation. Because... Uh, there, they didn't bring enough evidence uh, about the girl uh, murders, murdering actions. So yeah, she was very smart and very manip manipulative. That evil girl. My life was a living hell for about a year while the trial was still fresh in people's minds. Eventually, the hatred subsided, but it never truly died. There was always someone who recognized me, no matter how much I tried to change my appearance. Finding employment was nearly impossible. I drifted between part-time jobs and spent my free time drinking to ease the pain of becoming the national punching bag. It was around this point in time that I met my future wife. I still don't understand what she saw in me. I was an absolute wreck, not to mention the laughingstock of the entire country. But as soon as we met, she wanted to spend every waking moment with me. She wouldn't let me out of her sight and got possessive if another woman so much as looked at me. I quickly came to 
to depend on her for everything. It wasn't long before I couldn't live without her. I certainly wasn't in any state to take care of myself. I was like an adult-sized baby, helpless and vulnerable. Who knows? Maybe that's what she was attracted to. Maybe she just wanted to experience the sensation of owning a person. <laughs> Maybe she wanted to keep a human pet. Maybe all she wanted was someone who she could emotionally depend on. Even after all these years, I don't understand why anyone would waste their time with a man like me. But none of that mattered. Despite all my flaws, she accepted me. And that's all I needed. We got married about six months after meeting each other. Oh my god. The guy is becoming too dependent to that lady. Well, his future wife or... Whatever what you call that. died while giving birth to our only child. I still don't know how I possibly found the strength to keep going after I lost her. I was completely dependent on her for absolutely everything. I could barely take care of myself, much less a baby. Somehow, I managed to make it through those years. But even after all this time, I'm still a deadbeat drunk who can't hold down a job. It was... Very difficult to love my own infant daughter, knowing that my wife was dead because of her. I'm pretty sure I was a horrible father. She practically had to raise herself. I never tried to spend much time with her or learn about her interests. Even now, I don't think I know very much about her. I don't even know what kind of person she's turned into. I don't even know life is like. I know that she spends all of her time on her computer. She bought it herself. She seems to have a lot of money for someone her age. I'm afraid to ask where it comes from. Sometimes she comes home with blood on her clothing. I can't tell if it's her blood or someone else's blood. I try to stay out of her business. It's partially out of respect for her privacy, but it's mostly out of fear. Wait, is it Yandere? Or is it the uh, Infochan? Because Infochan got the money like uh, by uh, selling penny shots. But I don't know like if she already murdered like some people before. Unlike Yandere Chan, uh, which is pretty much uh, what she does right now. I mean, as a player here as well. But uh, there's nothing that uh, are mentioned about the money. But, anyways. I've never told anyone about any of this. Never saw a shrink, never had any friends to confide in. I thought that it would be therapeutic to record my feelings, even if I'm only talking to an obsolete machine. But this hasn't calmed me down at all. The only thing to come out of this experience is that all of the anger and hate I've kept buried for the past two decades has risen back to the surface. I don't think I can go back to the way things were before. I don't think I can go back to wasting my time with crappy part-time jobs, drinking, and sitting on a couch feeling miserable. I don't want this to be my life. But I can't let myself die just yet, either. Not until I see justice served. That girl from 1989. She's grown woman by now, but she's never been punished for the sins of her youth. Oh shit! The game crash. The fuck? Oh, I cannot continue. So I guess it's gonna be next time, guys. Sorry, but it crashed for real. Yeah, well, the next video I will show you guys like uh, the remaining uh, like tapes.